Hey everybody, it's Preston here, also known as Godzilla Hawk, and we are here with... An asshole. <laughs> yeah. You too. <laughs> yeah, so the band's back together, and today we're going to give you guys our second fantasy battle. Now, if you don't remember this video, we did this video a while back, we came up with this idea, and we, it was a lot of fun. The problem was, though... It, I was cracked out of my mind on energy drinks. And that was, but it made it hilarious, though. There Press was a, you buy energy drink supplement, also known as Moms for energy drinks. Uh, Warning may cause your heart to explode. Yeah, so we had some very interesting battles, some serious battles. We had some very cool ones, and then we had some stupid ones like freaking Kermit the Frog and Donkey, which you got. I, I managed to make it entertaining. <laughs> yeah, the, that, that's the goal of this. We're here to have fun with these projects. So the rules are going to be pretty much the same. Um, but I've added a bonus rule, which you'll like. So a lot of the time we get characters that we're like, eh, eh, about. So after we've picked our, character, our, our, our opponent's character for their match, at the very end of all six of them being picked, because we're only doing th three matches each, we can use what is called our plus one rule. Our plus, run, our plus one rule will allow us to select one of our six characters, put them to the side, and our, our picker gets to re-pick a character to replace him or them. That way we can make a match that's going to be pointless into possible something a little bit better. In any case, but then again, more pointless means more fun and like, more creativity. If you get the Terminator and he has to face off against Ash from Pokemon, there you go. <laughs> and like, I would, I would like to my plus one to take out Ash because all he can do is throw, throw Pokeballs. It would be interesting to catch a Terminator in a Pokeball. <laughs> And it, it turns solid silver, it grows a second eyeball, and it's all da -da 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 -da. He's like, I'm afraid to use this Pokemon. I'm going to put it where no one will ever find it. And never use it again. So, That's hysterical, though. So, in case something like that is how far you got to go to do something with it, like the Ewok versus Taya thing like we did, we can do that, and you can have to be like, like, you could have the Ewok versus a Watch Jawa. Yourself. Or you can have the Terminator versus, uh, I'll, I'll say, uh, like Diddy Kong. At least then it's a character that's more compatible. It's an off, it's an off offensive character, not a. Da, 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 I do a but that's that amazing animal fun. Fun. put them in there and then rape them off screen. It's not one of those characters. That way, it it adds to it. Now I was going to introduce a secondary one, called called the it's called the net, it's called the minus one which is a way of sabotaging your opponent's matches. Like if your opponent gets an, gets an epic pull. Like when I got Jaws versus Smog, Smog. You, could, you could have cashed in your, your minus one, chose one of them because you don't like anybody using Jaws but yourself, saying you don't get to use Jaws, in which case I get to reach in and pull my own name to replace Jaws. That's already confusing. No, that that'd be pretty. Uh, I'm sorry, so I already got confused. We're gonna save that this. for the le for the next time. So for this time, we only have the plus one. The minus one is so already confusing. One. The minus one is the easiest one of all. It's the way to sabotage one of them. Like uh, I know, but it's not a competition. It's just for fun. So we'll just keep whoa. it with the plus one. For so, now. so um, I'm I'm just trying to be fair because I I believe I picked for you last time. So you get to pick for me first. Absolutely. So I, Actually, that's the way it's going to go. I pick all your matches, and you pick all mine. Ooh, that's nice. how that's going to go. Okay. 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 Okay, I got one. I got the giant squid from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Okay. And he will be facing... Please let me tell you. Please let me tell you. <laughs> Or <Chala. laughs> Okay, I got, I got a couple stuck here. Jaden, Yuki, and Gia. <laughs> As you can see... <laughs> As you can see, we've hit an, an issue. <laughs> oh my god! So, so, oh my god, get extra bit. Okay. So, we're gonna go. Oh my that's why I put god. extra spaces. You got the giant squid. Oh my god! Hey, you're kind of close though. I, I told you, right? You, you were actually close though. You were saying, I'm gonna throw cards. I'm gonna throw cards. I'm, get I'm gonna throw cards at him and see how that works out. Okay, <laughs> no, no, so no. now you can pick my two. I'm gonna throw them in the face down. <laughs> God, that was such a stupid... <laughs> At least he's not filling the flow. <laughs> okay, you've got Ultron. Ah! I hope we get a joke character now. That'd be great. Versus Gizmo. 
But Gizmo's kind of bad, so. Gizmo? Yeah. Ultron's like, get away from me. He steps on him. Ooh, Quicksilver. Okay. From the new X-Men movie. Oh, that's good. Okay, that that actually could work because they actually had their own movie in uh, Age of Ultron. But, except that was an older Quicksilver. This one is the X-Men Quicksilver, though. So, if, but, if you were upset about me having Ultron, because you felt that it wasn't, it's not fair, that someone gets to use a character that you are envious of, you go like, I'd like to use my neck, my minus one, to remove Ultron, and then I'd repick for mine. See? And that's why I didn't be able to repick it. Okay. Okay, now you get to pick the no, round two for me. Round two. Random name, random name, random name is... Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong? Yeah, that's a very good question. Okay. And he'll be facing... He oh, my God. He'll be facing... Oh, it's an old name. What? What? Spawn. Comic book Spawn. As you can see, <laughs> you have got a very big problem. <laughs> Go ahead, you're, you're round two. <laughs> but this makes it more fun, though. It makes it more fun. What's he gonna do? Try to strangle Spawn with his cord? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. No. You got the angry video game nerd? A V G N. And his opponent will be. AVGN's already funny as hell, so. Gingerbread Man from Shrek. Oh, oh, that's good. <laughs> uh, Gingy. Gingy, yeah. Sorry, it's Gingy. Well, I like to call him Gingerbread Man. Okay. Your last match will be. Got one? I think I got one. Yeah, I got one. I think that was one of yours. Mecha Streisen. Who? From South Park. I don't know that one. Is that? I don't like Barbara Streisand. I haven't seen that episode. I can't find it anywhere. How can you not find Mecha Streisand? I looked on SouthPark.com. They won't allow me to show the episode. Was that episode 200? Uh, no. That was like in the first two or three seasons. I can't find it. So, okay. And that's like, it's like a metal Godzilla who has a huge nose and a big stink ray. And she will be facing your Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I might just give her the South Park one just because I don't know. That That's the only reason. Okay. Your pick for my last match. All right. You, I'm going to give you a joke one. I got Gingy. How can you not? I got Gingy. But Gingy and Angry Video Game, Angry Video Game there, though, you said could work. I don't know what was it. You, you got remember? fucked over, dude. I can't read it. Oh, I got the Jawa. Oh, yeah. cool. At least he's got a gun. <laughs> okay. Get Tay again. <laughs> Can we get Tay again? At least this one will shoot her. <laughs> okay. I got John Connor from the second Terminator movie. So when he was a kid. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is weird. No, it's funny. It's okay, like, now... I, I got all the weird ones. Now, it's time. Would you like to use your plus one to change out one of your six names? Yeah, I'll go ahead and take out uh, the Mecha one. Okay, so we're going to use it for the Mecha strike. Just because I don't know who she is. I, I don't want to screw okay, it up. Okay, this is your official replacement. All right. It's not because I hate Mecha or anything. I just I don't know who that is. The new ones. Herbert the Pervert. <laughs> I got two Jack Sp They're both perverts! This could work! <laughs> it's the battle of the purrs! Okay, so... Now you. I'm gonna use mine too, and I'm gonna do it on the uh, John Connor one. So go ahead and pick me a new one for John Connor. Okay. Jawa's now going to face... Blade. Oh, yeah! That's going to be a one-man fight. <laughs> Seven seconds later. <laughs> it's just like, oh, ugh, ugh. Okay. There are little Java parts so, everywhere. So we're just going to go all in order. So, since that you picked for me, I'll start off. 
and then you start with your round one, and we'll go back and forth. So okay, so shall we take a quick mediary mediary break to come up with our stories before we go any further, like we did last time? Mm, no, I'm gonna go ahead and start off, so that way you can think of your for next battle. Okay. Because like I said, we're this is not scripted. We're not gonna script this. We're not gonna think this out. We are just gonna go full out and just come up with it in our head. All right. Flying by the keister, gotcha. <laughs> okay, so we got the giant squid from Jay and Yuki. Okay, let's see. So at Duel Academy, Jay and Yuki is the main character from Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Uh, the I'm gonna throw that face down guy. So he decides that he's walking on the, around the island and he's like, you know what? I'm bored. I, I want to take my ball and go out a little bit in the sea. So he ends up going to the sea, trying to find some duelists out in the sea, like Mako Tsunami or whatever. If he's still alive, and all of a sudden. His boat starts rocking, and little Car and Wing Karibo, his spirit warns him, he's like, woo, woo, and Jay Yuki's like, what's the matter, guy? What, what's going on? And all of a sudden, you see this giant squid that had the submarine that Nemo rode, uh, had, had, and it just destroys it. Jay Yuki go, um, decides to head back to the island, but he realizes, crap, the motor's out. So he's stuck there with this giant squid about to attack him. So okay, keep going. So first, I'm trying to picture the whole thing here. So first, he tries to get with Karibo involved, and all you can do is just kind of go right through the squid because he's a spirit, so he can't do any damage. Hopefully, distract the motherfucker. So Jay Yuki then grabs out his duel disc and says, "Get your game on." And says, "Wait." Tosses the squid the dual disc and the two squid starts dueling. So the squid has his own deck. So they're like, get your game on. So, so now they're dueling. So squid summons the fiend cracking card. That's not even English yet. So it's all Japanese. So Jane's like, what the fuck is that? What card is that? Jack Squid can't speak English. So it's like, go, 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 go. And he's like, you're a fucking retard. So I'm gonna set, I'm gonna throw that face down. And then some smart man attack mode and attack the squid or whatever the fuck it is. Attacks it, the giant squid gets pissed off. And it's like, and just freaking swats at the boat. Jay Yuki goes flying out of the boat. Boat's destroyed because, you know, freaking the giant squid only lost like a few hundred life points. And he's already like, Giving up, like throwing a temper tantrum. So Jay Yuki falls in water and he's like, I can't deal with this crap no more. He starts swimming back to shore, but he's only swims for about 30 seconds. He's already getting tired, like, because he's a lazy fuck. He's like, Oh fuck, I can't, I'm tired. Bring a wing Karibo comes out, tries to help him out, but of course, he can't really do much because he's a spirit. So Jay Yuki just like slowly doggy paddling to the shore. The giant squid pops up and Freaking grabs Jen Yuki, lifts him up in the air with his giant tentacle, is about to drop in his mouth. And Jen Yuki then grabs his dual disc and just slices off the tentacle, drops back and starts falling. He's like, Yeah, I'm free! Falls into the crack and freaking into the squid's mouth. Squid eats him, and that's it. I would have <laughs> had like the squid use like the dual disc to eviscerate Yuki. <laughs> <laughs> Big little sashimi bits at him. So there's my death bell. Now, winner is giant squid. Not even close. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. Come on, you made that. was fucking stupid. Okay, so. No, yours. I have Ultron versus Quicksilver. Let's see if we can make this kind of interesting. So, uh, keep in mind, it's the Quicksilver from the X Men movie. Yes, the, the, the new one, the kid. Yeah. So, um, one day Quicksilver is out running about 10,000 miles an hour just because he can. Cops have no idea where the hell he's at. And he's stealing random shit from, you know, the, from Tony Stark's tower. Because he can. The coat. And there's nobody who can fucking stop him. And one day, he still he stole something. This day, day particularly, he stole something he thought was stupid. He, he, he just wanted to piss him off, so he thought he stole a toaster. Um, turned out that it was the head of Ultron. And uh, it was still alive. <laughs> Ultron gets pissed. And uh, activates one of his minion bodies, because he's like Legion. He uses the head to, to, to try and pinpoint where Quicksilver is, but he, he can't because Quicksilver runs like a little bitch. Holy shit. And uh, 
So instead, Ultron kind of activates his, his head and starts talking to him, which scares the fuck out of him. So Quicksilver trips, falls, and like skids 200,000 feet across the, the ground. He picks himself up, realizes he's missing half his skin on his right side. He's like, damn, that was stupid. <laughs> kind of limps up to the, the talking toaster and goes... How in the fuck are you talking? I mean, I, I always knew Tony Stark had some nice shit, but a talking toaster. <laughs> and he goes, I am not a toaster. And right when he finishes that one, Ultron falls from the sky and crushes the skull like he did the other Ultron. He goes, I am Ultron. <laughs> he looks up, he's like, uh-huh. <laughs> so Ultron's sitting there going, I don't like being touched by little weaklings. And he starts swatting at him, except, you know, Quicksilver can be half broken and half. He's still going to dodge. <laughs> Pissing off Ultron. You see, you're sitting there going, well, Ultron didn't get angry in the movie. Yeah, yeah, I did. You saw him take the guys off. See, this is what happens when you get me angry. <laughs> and, of course, Quicksilver lives to make him angry. And, he, and Ultron goes, oh, you're almost as annoying as Tony Stark. He's like, no, I'm t twice as annoying as Tony Stark. Look, I'm over here. I'm over here. I'm over here. Oh, well, look, I'm Tony Stark. Tony Stark, Tony Stark. And he's like, going around, going around, going around. And this fight just, like, you, you can't, he can't land a hit. Well, the problem is that even if he lands a hit, Ultron's just going to have another body. So, yes, that's right. I'm trying to figure out how to make this happen. Quicksilver starts going as fast as he can, tries to do that vortex thing that he's known for. Same thing that the Flash is known for, except with him, he keeps going until, you know, everything's destroyed. He makes a... His is supposed to make the uh, the air collapse on itself, which makes basically like an like a gravity force strong enough to crush steel. And um, I thought that was pretty cool about that character, but that's neither here nor there. He didn't really use it anymore. I'm trying to give him credit here, but he still made a flesh and bone, and he's already injured. So he's going around and around and around and around and around and around. And before you know it, Quicksilver passes out mid-stride because he's lost too much blood from skidding. Starts hitting the ground, hitting the ground, and just Ultron clotheslines him and takes his head off with one hit. Because he was able to predict the trajectory of his body. <laughs> Ultron is the winner. Okay. Okay. Alright. Now I got a second battle. <laughs> that oh. sucked, didn't it? I got a second battle now. And <laughs> I don't know if this is stupid. I don't know if this is as stupid or even stupider than the first one. Um, Woody versus Spawn. Yes, Woody from Toy Story versus Spawn. How the fuck does that... How, how do they meet? How does that happen? Okay, I'll, I'll make it work. I'll Ma make, it. make it work. I mean, like... It's, oh, oh, it's not okay, going it. to be like Joker and, you know, Hercules <laughs> running into each other good, but it's... It's along the lines. Okay. Hold okay. on, hold on. Let me, let me get a little comfortable here, so I, I, I'd like to hear this conversation. Okay. Set the scene. Okay. Break my imagination open. Okay. Blow so, my mind. Okay, so here we go. So Spawn, his real name is, um, uh, what, I forgot his name. Alan, I think? Oh, it's Blackie McBlack Black. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be, uh, Al Simmons. So Al Simmons, you know, ha of course, Larry finds out that, you know, he has a daughter. His wife had a daughter. So... After years go by, Spawn is able to see his child every now and then. So one day he ends up visiting um, his child, you know, kind of, you know, you know, having you know, the tea parties, you know, doing what father daughter stuff do, trying to be a good father again. And during that time, he's in a Spawn form though, but of course the kid's not scared because she knows who he is. And so see, so then right next to her bed was Woody. She got a Woody doll years ago. And the Woody doll comes to life to see what's going on. Why is she not playing with me? So he wakes up the other toys and goes, something's not right. Uh, no one's playing with me. They all sneak and they turn out to see this giant devil guy freaking playing. Um, look like It looks like in their mind, it looks like he's killing her when you're out there just kind of like wrestling a little bit. And Woody's like, no, no. And he freaking starts running, <laughs> running towards Spawn. Okay, <laughs> keep going. He runs towards Spawn, jumps off the bed, and goes on top of Spawn's head. And of course, bounces off. Spawn kind of looks at the doll like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and so, Woody doesn't move, of course, though, because he's still trying to pretend, you know, he's a toy. So, Spawn's but like, okay. It doesn't work when the hand's giving the finger. <laughs> so, so, Spawn just continues playing. 
Then when he wakes up, he's like, damn, that didn't work. So, so he gets this freaking sidekick, the, the horse's name, I forgot his name. So he gets the horse anyway, he's like, come on! Oh, Bullseye, there you go. So he gets Bullseye, grabs his little fake rope, he's like, we're gonna lasso this bitch! And he freaking tries to lasso freaking, um, Spawn's leg, but the rope is not, you know, large enough to reach around the ankle, so it doesn't do a damn thing. So he's more just like, slightly tapping his leg. So Spawn's just like, what the hell is that? And, you know, can't find out what's going on, so just ignores it. Then when he decides, you want this... This is it. I, I'm, I'm done. So, he gets the giant cable. He gets a cable. He ends up having the other toy show with pull out a cable. Woody then grabs the cable, throws it in the ceiling fan, creates a giant, like, hey man rope. It actually loops over the ceiling fan and hooks under Spawn's neck. They he turns on the ceiling fan and freaking gets caught up and starts spinning around while, I, while he's getting hanged. So Spawn's just like, ah, 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 and Woody's just like, you don't mess with her, you understand? I only play with her, you don't harm her. So of course, Spawn then just teleports out of there because he can do that. And then Spawn just looks at the Woody doll and picks him up, he's like, you're a little prick, you're pissing me off. Spawn then freaking Woody grabs a little knife, like a shard glass he found, and stabs Spawn in the freaking hand. Spawn's like, ow, you little prick. So you see Woody running around, running around the bed. Spawn's trying to get to him. Woody, of course, you know, grabbing like a giant boot and just like kicking him in the ass, literally, like going in and out. And of course, Spawn by then is getting fucking annoyed with this. So he grabs the bed, chucks it out the window. Woody's got nowhere to hide. And then freaking Spawn just picks up Woody, throws it clear to the wall numerous times because, you know, he deserves it. Throwing Woody against the wall. The other toys are looking on like, man. He should have never fucked up there. There, go, there goes his value on eBay. <laughs> so he just tosses it around. You see Woody just like all like almost completely torn up. It's like he's got scratches all over him. He's barely moving. He's like crawling. He's like, kill me. Help me. Toys and toys like, hell no. We're out here. We're, we're going to get with Buzz here. <laughs> oh, no. We're only just getting started there. <laughs> so then Spawn and just freaking... Picks up Woody and just burns his ashes right in front of the girl's face. The girl gets scared after that and gets upset because the Woody doll got destroyed and Spawn just leaves after that. And there you go. Spawn puts his ghost in a little tiny glass orb and says, there you go, you can talk to him now. <laughs> okay, so we knew that Woody was going to die on that one. Spawn's the winner. Okay. <laughs> I try to give him a challenge, though. <laughs> Alright. Now your next one. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, yeah, so you should have the, looked at that one before. So we got the angry video game nerd versus Jinji, the gingerbread man. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> so, here's what happens. One day, the angry video game nerd is reviewing uh, the Shrek video game. And he's playing and playing. He's like, it sucks. It sucks. It fucking sucks. And the worst character in that game is Genji. There's no point to the little character. He has no power. She does nothing. And while he's ranting, Genji pops out of the video game, grabs the cartridge, and chucks it. Hits him in the face. He says, I didn't see you finish it. <laughs> it ain't done until it's done. There's no way to finish it. You have to finish it as Genji, and there's no way that they'll break and win. I challenge you to finish the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So, Genji goes and plays the game and beats it as Genji. Genji beats it as Genji. And the AVGN, the AV video game nerd, gets really upset. Really upset. And he, he turns on him and goes, you know what, I'd like you to dip you in some milk. And he goes, I bet you'd like to put me in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and they have this little bout back and forth. They start beating the crap out of each other. It's like watching Ted all over again. <laughs> like every time he gets hit, Gingy flies across the room. But then Gingy counters with like throwing every disc and every video game off that wall at him. <laughs> Nail him in the head and shit. Um, and then, in the end... Gingy manages to lasso uh, the angry video game nerd on the ground and face towards the towards the console and gives him the, the remote control and says, You play till you win as me and you don't stop! <laughs> Seven months later, and intravenously, you know, giving him milk to keep him alive. 
<laughs> Angry Video Game goes, yes! Angry Video Game, the, the nerd goes, yes! I finally beat it as Genji! And Genji's like, took you long enough, bitch! And then just freaking takes a CD. One of the little CD cartridges and slips the Angry Video Game nerd's throat with it. That's cruel. <laughs> the winner is Genji. Suck it. <laughs> he did not just do that. Okay, your third and final yes, match um, is the one that got substituted. We both use him in our okay, third matches. I got Jack just, Sparrow versus Herbert the yeah, Pervert. I just want to add one thing out before I continue on any further. I just want to make a suggestion if we could do one bonus round after these. Just one. Okay, well I threw all of them back in there already, but okay. Well, so we got uh, round number four. We'll just do one more round. Round number four. Because these are kind of going what by we'll quickly. do is we'll make it a three-man battle. Okay, so we'll do a three-man battle, so it's a three-way. No um, substitutions on it. You yeah. play with the characters pulled. All right, and if we get any of the same characters we pull, we'll just uh, repick. Repick it. Like kind of like the drop <laughs> lottery. All right, so this is Jack Sparrow uh, versus uh, Herbert the Pervert. Okay, so Herbert this is the Pervert. I got some candy down in the summer. Whoever can swallow the most time up here wins. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. I'm waiting to hear how you set the story up. I want to know how they meet. Okay. I want to know where they meet, because <laughs> Jack Sparrow wandered down to Herbert. Okay, no, no, you got me an idea now. You got me the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know where this is going to go, and this is going to be perfect. Okay, so you know how they um, have those, uh, what you would call it, those jokes how sailors are gay, you know? So... Herbert the Pervert is on one of those shit on those cruises with a bunch of little boys and he's like the captain. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh god. Oh. <laughs> this is a pedophile boat. <laughs> we went from the love boat to the pedophile boat. Oh, and the best. The, no. The, 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 the Mad Boy Love Association on, on the sea. Okay. But anyways, so. And just, just to keep in mind, because it's going to make sense later. So, the boat is shaped like a penis. <laughs> Shocker there. Okay. Young man to the head of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So. Turn those balls. Turn those balls. <laughs> okay. Don't forget to jump on the giant throbbing vein. Okay. So, anyways. So. You know, he's all, you know, it's about to rain. Put up the protective rubber. He plays with every continue. Oh, gosh, you're I, just I, like I told you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you let me please finish? No, because this one's actually getting pretty good now. <laughs> okay, so, no, I'm trying to interrupt you as much. I want to try to get through this. So, one day. <laughs> You know, he's steering the boat, all the kids are like, you know, fucking tied up in the basement. They're all like, <laughs> So, and Herbert's you know, not paying attention because he's, you know, looking at some boy. He's like, ooh, baby, that's a nice thing you got there. And of course, while he's driving his boat, he hits another boat straight from the rear end. So, you get it now, right? <laughs> so, and then that boat is, of course, wood, so it's easy to break. So the boat slowly starts to shake, I'm saying it's a ship. Out from the ship comes Jack Sparrow and goes, What the hell, man? I was about to get laid tonight. I was about to get buried treasure, you dick shit. What the hell was that about? And Herbert's like, Well, that sure me to get on my way. I was going to jerk after you boys here. He's like, Well, what? And so he's like, Yeah, man, why don't you pick up some of your shines? And of course, Jack Sparrow, you know, goes up to the, walks into the next boat because you know they're connected now. And Jack Sparrow, <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> so giant dick boat through my ship, so sinking it slowly but surely. So then Jack Sparrow is like, beep, so, Jack, beep, beep, beep. so Jack Sparrow's like, so here's what you're gonna do: either you're gonna get off this boat, or you're gonna take me to my island so that someone can pick me up. And he goes, and Herbert goes, no. In fact, you're not even a little boys who get my damn boat. So, bringing the Jack Sparrow's like, all right, fine, we're gonna do this the hard way. Pulls out a sword, it's like, all right, we're gonna fight. We're to the death. And Herbert's like, okay. And grabs a dildo. And <laughs> so now they're fighting. <laughs> so they start fighting with a little boy. <laughs> no more. <laughs> it has to be 
be a metal one. <laughs> Don't worry. Cling, cling, cling. <laughs> so, oh, I see your dildo handling skills have uh, greatly outmatched my sword play. <laughs> so, no more. No I more. you know how to handle one that big. <laughs> so, no more than five seconds in, the dildo gets cut off. And Jack Sparrow's like, you're defeated. And Herbert goes, no, I'm not. Children! And of course, the children form this giant, like, mix. Child boss! <laughs> no, so the children form to this like giant machine, kind of like what Joe did, Joe Swanson did in that family episode with the cripple episode, we got all the cripples. So that's what happened, so Herbert's controlling all the kids, Jack Sparrow's like, fuck! I don't even, even use my hand to control it, <laughs> the side makes a turn. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, you're right, we'll go with that route. So he's doing that, he's controlling it with his hips or wing or whatever it is. So, Jack Sparrow's oh, like, not a mighty penis, it controls this contraption made out of little boys. Oh my <laughs> god! Oh my god! So, we got the next Family Guy episode right there. So, Jack Sparrow's running away, he's trying to find... Shit, 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 I need some rum! <laughs> so, what he does is he ends up grabbing some rum and grabs some, um... What is it? Um, he grabs some, um, whatchamacallit, some liar fluid. He ended up finding some at Herbert the Pervert's um, boat. And he goes, I got an idea. The run back then is very flammable, but go ahead. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. Um, so, he grabs some, um, he grabs a match that he found in uh, Herbert the Pervert's basement. And he finds, you know, his rum. Basement? You don't want to know. Is you don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I take it he's, he's run into Herbert the Pervert before. No, no, they're in the, so he has, so Jack Sparrow already has run with them, but he ends up going to his basement instead to try and outrun him. It's the hold. Yeah. So, of course, so anyways, so then he grabs the match and goes, I got an idea. Grabs the whiskey, throws it all over um, Herbert, grabs the match, half the kids are burning up, and very Herbert came pissed off, like, you yeah, are getting a red ranch on my dinghy. <laughs> You're burning up all my hot meat. <laughs> So Herbert then gets off, the kid, most of the kids are dead now, half of them just scurry around. Herbert says, you better not go anywhere because I ain't going, you pricks! So now Herb, now he thinks Jack Sparrow's gone and Herbert then whips out his walker and he's like, now we're time to fight! So he starts swatting each other and surprisingly Herbert knocks Jack Sparrow's sword out because Jack Sparrow's drunk as hell. So Herbert then goes, now it's time for me to finish this off! Pulls down his pants, he pulls down Jack Sparrow's pants and fucks him to death. He fucks Jack Sparrow to death. <laughs> fucks him so hard he actually dies, takes his hat, takes his clothes and goes, Alright kids, time to go! And <laughs> go, go play pirates! <laughs> Let's go sink some ships! And then that's pretty much what happens with that one. So the winner is Herbert, Herbert the Pervert. <laughs> okay. Now, well, as I said, the I third one. used my plus one to replace John Connor because John Connor is a little boy who screams like a little pussy. I mean, nah! the only thing he nah! knows, yeah, the only thing he knows how to do is reload a gun. So we got. Well, you know, he also knows how to hack, you know, coats and stuff. He did a few things. Whatever. Now we have a really awesome fight. You got Jawa or Jawas. I'll probably use a whole carton of them, but the Jawa versus Blade. Okay, make this work. I'm interested. This better be funny. Okay. Yeah, make it work. So, 10,000 years in the future, Blade has managed to become an, a, a true immortal. Just like the, a lot of the vampires believe. Uh, like their time skip thing where if they, if they get put into a, a, uh, a con conservation tube or chamber, they can survive off of small amounts of blood that had left in their system for decades at a time. So he's been in a tube for 10,000 years. The entire planet has been scorched clean. It is a dry desert planet that is now inhabited by Jawas. Okay. One of the Jawas big walk, big uh, behemoth riders driving through, through a, um, a wasteland that used to be a city uh, and their job is to clean up the crap that's considered garbage. And, like Wally. And, yeah, basically. They're, they're sitting there going, oh, look, this used to be a Wally unit. <laughs> right? And they're, and they're just like, they take Wally, put him in this little thing, and it goes, <laughs> and puts him into a smaller cube. And they come across, like, this little tiny platform on the ground. They're like, dink, dink. 
<laughs> we found something. So they, they take their uh, cutters and they open up the hole and drop straight down into a chamber, which is actually Blade's chamber. Uh, Blade decided to do this because, of course, he, w he had lost the battle. He had completely lost the battle and decided that in the future he would, he would come back when nobody knew of him and just assimilate because he had no other choice. Um, the first, Jawa, first of many Jawas drop down and uh, they start a torch and they come up to a, a blue cylinder in the middle of this room and they notice that on the walls everything's metal so they start tearing it apart. Right? They get to the blue cylinder and it's glass so they don't have much interest in it but it's solid blue and you can't see through it. Well, when they started pulling out the metal pieces uh, turned the, the last bit of power that was keeping the tube frozen off. And they're spending days tearing this room apart, scavenging the metal. And in the meantime, this tube is getting clear. And they see a black dude in it, and it scares the crap out of all the Jawas because they've never seen a black dude before. <laughs> they've, they've seen a charred body, but they've never seen a black dude before. And especially with all the the, the mohawk looking thing and the, the fangs and the, the little tiny... And the fact that he went mentally insane because oh, yeah. of the demolition um, man. Don't forget he's wearing glasses in the tube because Wesley Snipes doesn't remove the glasses unless he has absolutely no choice. And he's got tats all over his they're like, it's a gang member and they jumped out of there real fast and they're trying to get away. Well, he wakes up because he smells some of the blood from one of the Jawas that cut its hand on one of the metal pieces. Wakes him up. Breaks out of the glass. And he comes up into the scorched uh, planet and goes, holy crap, I slept for too long. And he's all wrinkly and shit, but just black as fuck. <laughs> and he's, he's just smelling blood like a shark would. And he, he knows what direction to go in. So he becomes a true vampire and goes hunting. The Jawas are still spooked crazy. And uh, he catches up. Because he still has that vampire speed, and agility, and jumping, and all the other crap that they think they have. It doesn't sparkle in daylight, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, like those pussies. So as he's running through the remnants of the city, seeing all the posters of failed movies like Eclipse, uh, SummerSlam, and <laughs> Eclipse uh, featuring SummerSlam with them being the sparkly balls hanging from the ceiling and all that stuff. SummerSlam. Which one, though? <laughs> Uh, I would say 2013. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to say something. I meant Bound for Glory. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh 2014. He catches up to their uh, their behemoth and jumps on. Breaks in. None of the Jawas know about this. Now, about a week into it, they notice that there's a lot of Jawas missing. They keep going up missing. And they're down to about a crew of five out of like 20 some odd guys. Jawas are kind of getting really freaked out because now they can't find any, not even remains or nothing. And they're talking about how they're going to get into a uh, group and, uh, and uh, keep their backs sticking to each other so they can keep each other alive. Well, Blade kills off four of them in the command module room and shuts down the whole behemoth. The last one alive is the one that's sitting in the crapper going, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily enough, the crapper is right next to the armory. <laughs> So he jumps into a, he jumps his ass into a uh, ATAT Walker remnants and starts driving it off, and he's walking around and he's just like, <laughs> no, something's getting me in here. Blade comes out of the out of the behemoth and he's like, son of a bitch, it's that guy. And the first thing that Jawa thinks is, this thing's gonna be up on blocks in a few seconds with no legs and an IOU in the window. <laughs> Start shooting the crap. <laughs> Try to take out Blade, but for some strange reason, the lasers are passing right through Blade and just blowing apart the, the behemoth, the, their, uh, their sand roller. Right? The sand roller explodes and takes out the legs of the ATAT -AT walker. Now the jaw was fucked, and he's sitting there going, oh crap. Luckily enough, like I said, he went to the armory and got one of those big, big boom boom sticks that, he, that they keep that nobody ever really talked about. That weird thing that looks like a. Uh, a blunderbuss that shoots a giant laser beam that disables all all machinery. Kind of cool. But otherwise, probably useless on living creatures. So he comes out, and he's just like, ah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. right? And Blade's sitting there going, oh, man, it's like eating Chinese food. I'm kind of sick from those fuckers. 
control blades just like, well, it's at least I have my glasses because, you know, everything else sucks. And the damn thing takes shot at his face and it actually breaks his glasses. And for the first time ever, Wesley Snipes turns into the most angry being in the world. White trash white guy on meth. <laughs> he goes, and he just starts going off, yelling at the Jawa. Jawa pisses himself, runs for him away. And unfortunately, at that point, he's so pissed that he can't see straight, so he starts running at the Jawa, but kind of like at an angle. <laughs> trips over, like, a, he trips over, like, a piece of machinery, for that, a piece of the of the behemoth in the sand, rolls, and wham! He lands chest first into a giant ball of serrated metal that was left over from the behemoth, <laughs> skewering his heart, killing Blade. Jawa wins after kissing his rose. <laughs> so Jawa didn't really win, it was just like, Blade's just one of his clutchy move. Yes. <laughs> hey, the Jawa's the one that's gonna die, he's got nowhere to go, he's miles and miles and miles away from home. He's got no mobile vehicle to get there, and he's in a desert by himself. And he's already pissed himself. So clearly he's losing fluids at an alarming rate. So. Alright, so you get to pick the first three for me, but like I said, remember, any of these characters that we pick, we, we have to uh, repick. Okay, so I got this one here. We have the Demolition Man. Okay. Here, I'll let you ride it this time. Your first one is the So I'm just going to call him, um, what's his name? Uh, John Spartan. Okay, let's see what we got here. Steve Urkel. Okay. And a Smurf. Oh, we got one of the new ones too. Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> you really stick to a plot, don't you? Okay. Yes. Yes, yeah, so here's yours. Go ahead and pick my three. <laughs> okay. It was like, okay, cool. It was like, somebody put me back in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, who doesn't love that line? Okay. I got a sand person from Star Wars. You know the sand people? Yeah. <laughs> Probably the one that ate the Jawa. <laughs> you guys will just do that. Just be like, what day was. And the, and the winner is nobody because the Jawa still gave both Blade and the Sand Person severe diarrhea. Okay, you got the T Rex from Jurassic Park. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> I already have the T Rex getting ridden by the Sand Person. <laughs> no, don't do anything else. All right, last one. Surprisingly, we got all new ones. Justin Bieber. Please be Justin Bieber. <laughs> Please be Justin okay, Bieber. We, mine ends, we all win. Bruce Lee. Oh, crap. <laughs> there we go. All right, so of course I'll start with mine first. This will be the I final. I mean, you might as well because everybody knows how mine's going to end. You got to make it fun, though. I can't, dude. It's Bruce Lee. That's like saying God's coming down to smite me. <laughs> you have to try and make it somewhat fun. Don't make it short on purpose. I'm going to try. I would rather have a Gundam versus a T-Rex versus, I'd say, like Ant-Man. You got Sam Person here to Bruce Lee to work with. <laughs> okay, but anyways, so we got John Spark, the Demolition Man versus Steve Urkel for Family Matters versus Buzz Lightyear for Toy Story. How random can you get? Okay. And that's why we have Fatal Three Ways. Triple Threats. So, well, I call it Fatal Three Ways because I think that there's a possibility that everybody's going to die. Not everyone's gonna die. We have to have a winner. Now, does he have to be the, the toy Buzz Lightyear, or can he be the cartoon Buzz Lightyear? It's, it's the toy. Or can it be his original character from the from the it's film? It's the toy. It's the toy. Okay. <laughs> I had to make that officially. And which sand person do I have to use here? Because there's the one that raped his mom. There's the one that killed his mom. There's the. It's one, just a sand there's person. One that goes, <laughs> There's a lot of different sand people we can talk about here. No, there's, there's just a, a sand person there's in a general. There's the Bantha Rider. There's, there's okay, the, okay. Uh, the look. <laughs> it's just a sand person in general. There we go. Aren't you a racist? <laughs> sand person. <laughs>
Don't they call us Mexicans? Oh my god! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh, I, I forgot how uh, Arab Americans. <laughs> Sorry. So, let's see. John Spartan, Steve, we're going to buzz light here. So here, okay, let's see here. How is this going to work? Okay, so, we're going to go back, and we are going to, it takes place in the future. John Spartan's in the future, and he's like, you know what, I got to get used to this. Um, in fact, you know what, I'm a little interested, because you have a museum of some like old artifacts, like guns and stuff, right? Do you have any other artifacts? And you go, oh yeah, certainly, we got tons of them. So they go in the back, and it turns out one of the collector's items is the Buzz Lightyear toy. And they're like, where'd you get this from? He's like, oh, we cleaned it up, and uh, it's called Buzz Lightyear. Some kid, Andy, years ago had it. Um, he died years ago, and we ended up picking it up. Um, why, is, why is there a penis drawn on his helmet? And he was not the last owner, apparently. <laughs> it could be worse. It could be like freaking Buzz Light, the freaking robot chicken, where they use him as a fucking you know, pot freaking thing. Why is it after we hit the button, he speaks in Spanish? Because <laughs> he was flying over the border. It's the car. <laughs> so, so they end up finding the bus out here, and right before he gets close enough to kind of get a good glimpse of him, he hears the thumping at the at door next door. So John Spartan gets to look over. He's like, "What's that?" And the others go, "I have no idea." So they open the door. Out in the come nowhere comes Steve Burkle, and Steve Burkle just like. Well, that was easy. And Josh Burke's like, who the hell are you? And Steve Burke's like, oh, I'm Steve Urkel, and I just came back from that weird freezing chamber thing. They finally let me go. And they're like, they let you go. I was like, I guess. I think the theme malfunction. I found my clothes. It's like, <laughs> John Spartan's already fucking annoying. So I was like, oh, put me back in the fridge. And of course, it's like, okay, seriously, who let the fucking black nerd out? And they're like, we didn't do a damn thing. Out of nowhere, while they're freaking arguing, you see Buzz Lightyear freaking come out of his freaking um, tube. He was able to escape because, you know, the glass is actually very easily breakable um, in that version anyway. So Buzz Lightyear escapes and he's like, what's going on here? Erko kind of like, hey, look, a green detail down. <laughs> and John Spartan's like, what the fuck is this now? And oh, every God, It's getting worse. Uh -huh. <laughs> so everybody is like, what the fuck is going on? John Spartan's like, okay, we got a freaking black nerd in the future, which never happens, and we got a green condom with plastic wings looking at me. This is weird. So John Spartan's like losing his fucking mind. He's getting crazy. You see Urko freaking, <laughs> and Buzz Lightyear's like thinking he's real. He's like, I'm the Buzz Lightyear. I fight Zerd, and John Spartan loses his fucking mind. So he grabs a gun and starts shooting everything in sight. Kills his comrades. He's shooting everywhere. Urkel's like, eh, eh. Freaking hides. Buzz Lightyear's still trying to fly, but of course he's like, eh, 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 eh. Kind of popping to the oh, ground. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> what the? So the Buzz Lightyear's like, okay, I got myself a threat. And I don't know if Steve Urkel accidentally trips over freaking Buzz Lightyear. Lightyear gets pissed at Urkel while the fire's still going on. And he goes, how oh, dare you trick me? Eric goes like, I'm sorry, it was an accident. And freaking Buzz Lightyear's like, you're dead. Dee, dee. And Eric goes like, what are you trying to do? And it's like, I'm trying to zap you with my laser. Freaking John Spartan's still shooting everybody. Everybody's all freaking at a corner now. John Spartan's out of ammo already because he shot so many times. John Spartan's got those fucking crazy eyes like, <laughs> in the corner. You see Buzz Lightyear like, I gotta load up my lasers to high maximum. And see, Eric was like, where's my cheese at? <laughs> They're all just fucking stuck. So now it's like, a battle of the fists. So Sparty ends up finding some more guns. So he finds that uh, double barrel shotgun he used, finding Wesley Snipes' character at the museum. So he grabs that, he starts firing it, he gets ready to fire anything that moves. Urkel ends up finding out that he's a mad scientist, so he ends up finding some old technology. Builds himself an armored suit. Um, that shoots cheese. Yes, it happens. And then you see Buzz Lightyear just like... I forgot about that episode. He actually does not shoot cheese, though, I don't think. But he does... There is a giant metal, metal er, nerd in there that he builds. A robot nerd. 
But anyways, then Buzz Lightyear finds Jack yeah, Urkel. <laughs> so then freaking uh, Buzz Lightyear finds a shrink ray and a uh, jetpack. He uses the shrink ray to shrink down the um, jetpack. He puts on the jetpack so he can actually fly. And now it's a goes flight. You see Buzz Lightyear start flying around. He freaking charges at John Spartan head first. Wham! John Spartan plops to the ground, got this big red you know, knot on his head. He's like, oh, uh, uh, uh. He's still flying around. You see freaking Nerdin uh, shooting at with his cheese gun, trying to shoot down um, Buzz Lightyear. But Buzz Lightyear's so fast, he's dodging everything. Tries to hit the nerd, and the nerd swats him like that by accident, actually. He hits him by accident. Freaking Buzz Lightyear gets stuck in the wall for a brief second. Urkel's like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> then John Spartan finally wakes up like, oh, fuck that Urk. Gets the guy, sees Urkel, tries to shoot him a few times, shoots the arms so the arms don't work now, so Urkel's got no firearms. But he's stuck, but the suit's protecting him, so he can't be killed that easily anyway. So it's John Spartan being a fucking idiot, not aiming for the face, so he's just shooting, 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 it's not affecting him, but of course he's got no armory now, so Urkel kind of like, Covers down. I was trying to figure out a way to get out of this. Meanwhile, freaking Buzz Lightyear comes out of the hole and he starts flying around some more. He's charging. He's going straight after him, and he puts his fist right through the gun barrel. Just <coughs> clocks it. Just clocks it right there. John Spartan's like shaking the gun, trying to fling him off, and flings him off. The arm's stuck in there though. John Spartan doesn't realize that. So the arm pops up. Buzz Lightyear. His jetpack goes off. He's on the ground. Like, oh crap. You see freaking John Spartan going to shoot Buzz Lightyear, pulls the trigger, boom, the gun blows up in his face, and it just, yeah, the gun's useless now, John Spartan's like, scratched up really bad, like, ah, half his face is blown off now, it fucking hurts like a motherfucker, St Urkel then starts going, he's like, ah, he's like trying to charge right at John Spartan, and, you know, steps on Buzz Lightyear, slips, and then freaking BAM shoves John Spartan right into a bunch of broken glasses on the ceiling. He goes through the ceiling, John Spartan's dead immediately. Urkel's like, Dad, do that! Freaking John Spartan's just dead now. One of the comrades over there is just like, Oh my god, he fucking got, he died from a toy and black nerd. This is ridiculous and embarrassing. So now it's coming down to one arm Buzz Lightyear and Steve Urkel. Steve Urkel has no idea where he's at right now. He loses his glasses, so he can't see a damn thing. Buzz Lightyear's only got one arm. And he just, you know, starts jumping all around all these uh, like, uh, platforms. And he goes for one punch. He jumps, punches Urkel in the face. Urkel goes down. And Urkel's on his back. Buzz Lightyear climbs on his chest. Starts repeatedly punching in the balls. Repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Just he keeps doing it and Did I do that? 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 <laughs> just keep punching, 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 punching until you actually hear a breaking sound. He enters the gym, he breaks his balls. And we're going, oh! And friggin', you know, Buzz like, this is bull crap. I'm done with this crap. And ends up friggin' taking his uh, arm, he's like, free! Starts shooting at friggin' Urkel, of course, he doesn't do a damn thing. Urkel's like, eh! Swats Buzz Lightyear out. Buzz Lightyear goes into a freaking a high voltage thing, gets stuck in there, and gets short circuit. The thing blows up. Urkel slowly gets back going. He's like, oh, look what you did. And then that's the end of Urkel wins. Okay, so we got <laughs> Urkel winning. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Urkel so was that entertaining for enough for you? <laughs> sure. Okay, right, so we got the Sand Persian T Rex and Bruce Lee. Okay, I'm easy. Okay, so engine, it's it's a hundred years into the future. The engine has uh, their own facility, and they bring back fossils. Uh, uh, they got the big breakthrough bringing back a bunch of fossils for some random kid who had like six Pokemon on him at some point or another. Um, <laughs> so uh, they're doing a lot of work. The first thing they do is they bring back a T Rex, and they're like, "Oh, this is good." This is good, and he's he's going to be the signature star of our attractions for our movies. And <laughs> they come across a, an unknown fossil, 
And this one was surprising because they'd never seen this creature before. So they used the genetic basics to, to, to build it up, and after reading the research, it's, they thought it was going to be like an, an ape. And it was like, this is the first step to creating life again, or even, you know, bringing back life. And they end up, it kind of ended up coming out as being a sand person, which they have no idea what the hell kind of environment to put him in. So they, they put him in like a, a forest by himself. They're like, we don't know what the fuck to do. Right? And the, his enclosure is within, a, within uh, I'll say, 100,000 feet of the T-Rex. So he always hears the T-Rex roar. Always hear T-Rex roar. And it started driving him fucking crazy. Because Sam person <laughs> is a natural hunter scavenger. And then they go, you know what? We've been planning this for a long time. Let's go ahead and try and bring back somebody important. And China. No, I'm not going to say China. I'm going to say Paramount Pictures presents them with the right fist of Bruce Lee. And they say, bring back the most important man in the world. So they go ahead and they resurrect Bruce Lee. Except Bruce Lee, this resurrection of Bruce Lee is not fully done. This is the first test subject. And his mind is warped. Like, he, he loses it. He's got no, no self-control, nothing. Except that now with this new enhancements because they use the exact same uh, resurrection, or exact same technology used to make the T-Rex to make him, he's unusually strong. Which people are like, isn't he unusually strong? I'm talking about, yeah, he, he picked up, he grabbed a steel door and ripped it off the hinges and broke out of his cell, out of his, out of his cage. And he goes around, he just starts wasting people <laughs> with dragon punch, death kick, knee crack, and he just starts wasting everybody, right? And he, the last person he kills is the doctor who was in charge of the resurrection. When he hits them and breaks, he really hits them one hit to the face, the doctor's head explodes. And as the body falls, he hits the emergency uh, release for all the habitats in the area that they were responsible for. Now the sand person and the T-Rex are loose. <laughs> Right? They're fucked. <laughs> and Bruce Lee's got nothing left to punch except the wall. Which pisses him off. And then he hears a T-Rex roar. And he's like, oh! <laughs> so Bruce Lee kicks the wall open and jumps into the T-Rex's cage. While the, the connection to, well, while the connection to the sand person's cage has been open, he has charged all the way across straight to the opening of the T-Rex cage and went inside too. The T-Rex has been killing things in his pen, it doesn't give a shit. And it's just like, what's that smell? That's new. There's more than one. Ooh. <laughs> T-Rex gets up, roars, Bruce Lee gets a boner because he's like, oh, something dangerous. <laughs> Sad person's all, <laughs> and thinks twice, is like, something bang. <laughs> Unfortunately, Sad person turns to run and Bruce Lee's right there just, wham, takes his head off. Sad person's out immediately. Oh, Sam person couldn't last. He has no specialty. <laughs> Bruce Lee's sitting there staring at the at the ground. Looks up, and the T Rex head just comes right out, face to face with him. And Bruce Lee smiles. <laughs> T Rex goes down and just grabs onto the uh, Sandman and eats him. Sand person and eats him, and looks at him again. <laughs> and you have Bruce Lee just looking his his knuckles. Staring at, at the T-Rex the whole time. <laughs> now, normally you say the T-Rex is thinking, meat. No, the T-Rex sitting there going, the fuck? <laughs> That's right. The T-Rex is smart in this movie. He's sitting there going, I didn't even hear the other thing scream. <laughs> that wasn't a whole body I ate. Why is that thing licking its knuckles? <laughs> So, I'm just trying to get something. Ah, fuck! Son of a bitch! Sorry. So, okay, they're not here. That happens. Fight! Sorry. T Rex roars. Drew C goes, <laughs> The crowd's going ape shit. Bruce Lee notices the crowd, gets pissed, and runs at him. 
The T-Rex stops dead in his tracks and watches him run. <laughs> that watches Bruce Lee dismember and, dis and kill hundreds of fans, hundreds of spectators, and it literally made the T-Rex piss himself. It's been a piss yourself type of battle. <laughs> the T-Rex sitting there going, Rrr. Bruce Lee jumps out of the things after killing all the fans. Walks, walks up to the T-Rex. The T-Rex is just sitting there going, I'm fucked. T-Rex turns around to leave. Bruce Lee, whoa, just back of the knee, breaks the kneecap of the T-Rex. T-Rex goes down in a heap. Bruce Lee goes up for his finisher and whap, T-Rex grabs him. And goes to tromp down as hard as he can. Bruce Lee, uppercut, punches out the entire top portion of his skull off the head. Winner is Bruce Lee. Because <laughs> nothing beats Bruce Lee. Maybe except Chuck Norris. Except Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris! <laughs> the one guy I don't... There's like a handful of characters I don't want to pull. Because they're the infinite win loop in them. They can't, they can't lose. How would you make Bruce Lee lose? T-Rex bite his arms off? And Bruce Lee would kick him. T-Rex swallows him. Bruce Lee would kick through his stomach. They could have done me like the same person that ends up, he's not dead completely, grabs a gun and just shoots Bruce Lee from the back. Bruce Lee would dodge. No, from the back, so he wouldn't be able to see or sense it. He'd be Bruce too busy. Bruce Lee would dodge it. He'd be like, wow! he just <laughs> karate chop it out of the air. No, actually, he wouldn't. Fine, he's actually died from bullets in one of the movies. He actually has. He could dodge, but he's four, but there's other times where he actually has been killed in gunfire in movies. Mm -hmm. I have the movies. I'm that's like, fine, that's fine. I, I still wouldn't do that to Bruce Lee. Right, that's fine. No, I'm just saying though. It's like Bruce Lee really fights. Bruce Lee really win. That is the way it goes. <laughs> yeah, maybe for yeah, maybe like Chuck Norris. So that's that's, that. that's that's review, shall we? So for your battles, you have the Jazz Squid versus Jaden Yuki, which wasn't even a close Jazz Squid one. If you had made Jaden Yuki win, I would have been surprised. You had Spawn beating Woody. If, if Woody would have won, I'd, I'd have been surprised. You had. Meg, you had Mecha Streisand taken out. You had Jack Sparrow versus Herbert the Pervert, with Herbert the Pervert winning. Oh. <laughs> and then you had John Spartan versus Steve Urkel versus Buzz Lightyear, with Steve Urkel winning. John Spartan dying after having an embolism, and Buzz Lightyear getting shocked to death from something or other. Okay. That is not... I was hoping I wouldn't see. I, I was hoping I wouldn't see Steve Urkel win. I'm not going to lie with that. I had Ultron beating Quicksilver. Dude. It, 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 was that surprising at all? No. Yeah. I had Jinji versus be, beating the, the angry video game nerd. Was that surprising? Kind of. Okay. The way he did it was mean, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, I had the Jawa beating Blade through technicality. Was that surprising? Yeah. Okay. And then I had the they had the T-Rex and Sand Persian dying to Bruce Lee. Was that surprising, really? No. No. <laughs> Just... It could have been King Kong and T-Rex and Bruce Lee, and I still would have picked Bruce Lee. Although if we had Chuck Norris and Tommy, the former Green Ranger, that would be just a martial arts I would rather for. do Bruce Lee versus uh, Chuck Norris versus uh, the, the Sega Sada. Sega Sachio? Yeah. And it's just, <laughs> infinite loop, nobody wins. <laughs> Everybody dies. They keep hitting each other, the world explodes, we all die, and nobody knows who won because nobody's left. <laughs> no, but... So that was our second battle. Um, we had some stupid ones. We had some good ones. I think the first the first battle was the best one we did. Yeah, uh, the the nothing uh, will ever ever top for Joker Hercules. Yeah, nothing will ever top that. Well, it's not our fault. It's just because of the guys we picked and we and the stipulations and the story we picked. We're definitely gonna do this again. So don't think this is the end of it. Well, th th we're right. hoping. We look forward to punish you some more. We're hoping maybe we can even get third member here, whether it's Jose or Jeremiah, and we can freaking do a three-way one, which I think that would be, be kind of awkward. Why, Jose? I'm trying to pick your numbers and get your balls out of my face. <laughs> well, maybe Jeremiah though. I mean, that'll be interesting. But you know, this was still fun. Um, I'm glad we did this. Um, like I said, there, we'll be doing this more. Um, definitely, I would say maybe in the next five or six months or so, maybe we'll do another one of these. Um, 
So that's pretty much it. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, this is the month of October, so I'll be getting a little bit more Halloween stuff. And in terms of Halloween Cell Life reactions, I'll probably just skip it. Well, Brian and I will probably do a review or something like that. And then we'll do live reactions, I would say, at Royal Rumble. When we do a Royal Rumble contest every year. Hello. So that is pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Comment down below. Tell us, did you like this video? Which battle was your favorite? Comment, us, uh, comment what you like. Which one did you not like? And all that great stuff. But that or that, I am Preston, a.k.a. Godzilla Hawk. So take care of all my peeps. And this is... Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Stay tuned.